Hey everybody, today we're covering inverse normal calculations. Let's start just by reviewing how we compute probabilities in the standard normal distribution. We do it using the cumulative distribution function, or CDF, which we usually denote phi of z. And the way that works is, you feed it a z-score, and it returns the probability that a randomly chosen z-score will come out to be less than or equal to that value. I think a picture here helps a lot. Here I've sketched phi of 0.5. And the way that you calculate that is by drawing the standard normal bell curve, finding z equals 0.5, just a little bit to the right of the mean there at z equals 0, and then shading all of the area to the left of that z-score. Phi of 0.5 is going to be the area of the shaded region. Now remember that the total probability should always be 1. The total area under that bell curve is going to be 1. So another way of interpreting that shaded area is as, the, is as a percentage of the total area under that bell curve, a total probability. Now the inverse normal CDF, phi inverse, just reverses this process. Instead of feeding it a z-score and getting back a probability, we feed it a probability and get back a z-score. Specifically, the z-score that has that cumulative probability. For instance, phi inverse of 0 0.5 is 0. Since phi of 0 is 0.5, half of the probability under the standard normal distribution curve lies to the left of z equals 0. Similarly, since phi of 0 0.5 is 0.6915, the inverse of 0.6915 is 0.5. And since phi of negative 1 is 0.1587, the inverse of 0.1587 is negative 1. We literally are just reversing the inputs and outputs in these two functions. Let's have one more picture um, for this third example. The area to the left of z equals negative 1 is 0.1587. So phi of negative 1 is 0.1587, and phi inverse of 0.1587 is negative 1. Now, I should mention all of these numbers that I've just said are all approximate. Um, the values that come out of the normal and inverse normal distribution tend to be irrational. Now, it is possible to do inverse normal calculations using tables, and statistics textbooks will sometimes encourage you to do it that way. That's pretty old school. In the 21st century, we should be doing these using technology. In R, the command for the inverse normal is QNorm. So if we want to do phi inverse of 0.6915, we're inputting QNorm of 0.6915. And we get out 0 0.5001066, about 0.5. One more example, if we want to compute phi inverse of 0.1587, it's Q norm of 0.1587, and we get about negative 1. Remember, when you're doing inverse normal calculations, the input is a probability, and the output is always a z-score. Let's have a couple examples. First of all, let's find the 90th percentile in a standard normal distribution. This just means the z-score that is going to capture 90% of the area under the bell curve to its left like in this picture. In other words, a result that's going to be greater than 90% of the results we'll get if we keep drawing from this distribution repeatedly. So what we need to do is a Q-norm. Phi inverse of 0 0.90 is Q-norm of 0 0.90, about 1.28. This is the 90th percentile in the standard normal distribution. Now, once we know the z-score of a given probability or percentile, we can easily determine the corresponding value in any normal distribution, as in this example. Scores on a certain standardized test are normally distributed with mean 1060 and standard deviation 195. How high does a student have to score in order to be above 95% of the scores, in order to have a 95% chance of beating a randomly selected score? So the first thing we're going to do is to find the 95th percentile, uh, the z-score that lies above 95% of the values in the standard normal distribution. z is going to be phi inverse of 0 0.95, q-norm of 0 0.95, about 1.64. So the way we interpret that result is that in order to have a 95% chance of beating a randomly selected score, 
a student has to score 1.64 standard deviations over the mean. That's what z-scores mean. Now, with that interpretation in mind, we're able to calculate the needed score. 1.64 standard deviations over the mean is going to be computed by starting from the mean and then adding 1.64 standard deviations. The formula is x equals mu plus z sigma, and it just represents exactly what I just said in words. Plugging in the values, 1060, the mean, 1.64, the z-score that we determine that she needs, and 195, the standard deviation. All of that simplifies out to 1379.8. The student has to score about 1380 in order to be the 95th percentile of this distribution, in order to have a 95% chance of beating a randomly selected score in this test.